So, um, so before I do the message today, um, just things are a little bit different. And you guys, you guys like that, don't you? Different things yeah. being like mixed up. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. That's good. Let's keep that attitude. Whatever. Whatever happens. So thank you guys for um, supporting last week, being here um, while Shelly and I were gone um, to Florida. Um, it was, it's kind of hard for us anymore because it's hard for us to leave here. And we, we got to Florida and it took us almost four days to shut down to be able to just relax. And so on the way down, we thought we were going to be able to get a, um, a hotel down there. And we, we ended up getting an Airbnb uh, called the Love Shack. So <clears throat> it was a nice place. We stayed with some other people and they were really nice people and they were Christians. So it was really cool that we got to minister to them while we were at the Love Shack. And uh, so, you know, if you want to sing that song, sing it. Uh, and so, so it was really amazing. But I tell you what, the, um, the, there was double red flag. If you guys know what that means, it means you can't get into water. I mean, they were pushing to the limit where we would walk in the, in just where the water would come up and we'd walk in it. And if they drove by us and saw us, they would tell us to get on the dry sand. That's um, so they were just really pushing that don't get in the water thing. And uh, so we tried to obey the best that, that we knew how. And if the water come to us, then it was fair game. But um, we did not go out into the water. So we waited for it to come to us. So um, that's a good thing. But the waves were really crazy. I mean, it was a, it was a battle. I mean, there was a battle going on in the ocean. You know, the, the, the storms had just come through. The hurricanes had just come through and missed Destin. But they got a lot of the waves from it, a lot of the tor turmoil from it. The water was not blue. We got there. Shelly was, like, expecting to see the blue water and the turquoise water and the white sands. There was barely a beach. I mean, there was probably 15 feet of a beach in most places. And it was it, it already, it had taken the hurricane, um, from the last hurricane, it had taken some of the sand dunes away. So the beaches were really small. And we did not know, but it was um, fall break or something, and the beaches were jam-packed. <laughs> the highways were jam-packed. So that's why we couldn't get uh, a place, and we had to get the Love Shack, which was like 40 <laughs> miles from where we normally go. So, um, so everything was a drive, waiting in traffic. But that was all good. But um, <clears throat> while we were there, and I want to step into a little serious thing. While we were there, we got a call at 2.30 in the morning. And, you know, when you get a call at 2.30 in the morning from an Amish man, you kind of want to answer the phone. So um, our Amish friends that come to the revival, um, Fanny, she um, was the, the one that come the first night. If you guys knew the couple that come the first night, it was 12 the second night, but Fanny come the first night, her and Alvin. Um, she was pregnant, and, or is pregnant, and she's 13 weeks, but when she called us, they were ha she was having contractions at 13 weeks. And so we got to pray for them. We prayed for about 40 minutes on the phone, and we just prayed in the Spirit, and we felt like this, God came down and answered prayer. To that point, her contractions had stopped. Her pain had stopped, so everything had, had ceased at that point. And, you know... <clears throat> This, this family, this Amish family, was exiled from their community. So like, that would be like, you know, you just being kicked out of your family and your family never talking to you again, like having nothing to do with you. And so that's what happened to them because they wanted more of Holy Spirit. They wanted more of God. So the whole, the whole 12 of them were actually exiled from the whole community. They can't go back into the community, and they were totally exiled out. So... Just imagine if that happened in your life. But what grabbed me was the faith that these, these Fanny and her husband have. The faith that they have. When we prayed, he called me the next day. He said, man, I know God moved. God moved. And so we're believing that God moved on this situation. Now I'm going to give you the next part of it. The midwife that they have had for their last two kids because they have their babies at home. The midwife that they had had for the last two kids um, could not take any money from them because now the Amish community, if they do anything for them, they cannot get paid from them because they can't receive anything from them, which is, you know, it's just a different culture, a different um, thing. But so the midwife said that she would go ahead and work with them on this new baby, and she wrote off the bills from the last baby. So I just said, 
told him, I said, count it as a blessing that you're getting this done for free, you know, if that's how they want to do it. So, well, she did a sonogram, however they do it, um, with them portable devices, and she didn't find a heartbeat. So he texted me, he said, uh, hey, Jason, she didn't find a heartbeat, uh, be praying. So we just, we started praying, and when he called me, he said, uh, this is their faith. He said, well, she just probably missed it. So we're believing for a heartbeat. We're believing for life in that womb of Fanny. We're believing for life. And so let's just contend with that. So when we pray today, we're going to pray here for a moment for them. But let's believe in life for that situation. Also, we have um, the gentleman that come the first night of the revival. He was the very first one to get, to get baptized. He waited to get his port put in so he could come to the revival first and then go and get his port put in for um, esophagus cancer, what he was diagnosed with. And... We had scheduled, we, Shelly had talked to them while we were in Florida as well. That's why when I said we can't shut down. We're just like constantly, still, we're still going. It's like you try to shut the things down. We just, it's hard to. And so we scheduled a meeting with them. We met with them in Columbus on the way home to pray for them. And when we, um, when we got there, just their house was just so full of God. I mean, you felt God in their house. Um, and we got to pray for him anointed him with oil. I watched his, I asked the Lord specifically to change his collar at least one degree, but, but his collar, like when we got done praying with him, his collar lit up and he was, he was lit up different than what he was when we walked in. So we're thankful for that. He's got, he's got, um, he's 42 years old. His name's Brian Graves. His wife is Amy. They have four children. They just got um, in this youth position and um, in Nashville, they just got in this youth position, and the enemy's trying to attack their family with this with this cancer. So we're just we're just saying no to that. We're not believing that that this is going to be the end of Brian, but we're believing this is going to be the beginning of what he's his life and what God has for him. So in the last service, what we did was we just said, you know, Lord, and we prayed this. We prayed for a good time in the last service. We said, Lord, if we lose one person to cancer, we're going to gain 10 people to the kingdom. So we're just believing that today. If we lose one person to cancer, we're going to gain 10 to the kingdom. So however this is going to happen, you know, we can lose someone to cancer and they're still going to go to heaven. So they're free either way. But, but there's a mission that we have here. And I want to share this. I shared this in the last session we have, we're at a turning point in, in, in our country right now. And I'm going to tell you guys, you have to vote. And I'm just going to tell you to vote for life. Because what the enemy has planned, what he's done was taken, he's taken our babies from us. He's stealing our babies from us. Because when he said the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. That's why, because God knew that what was going to happen. The enemy has taken our babies from us. These are people... Young people that are going to grow up and going to minister and bring people to the kingdom of God. So that's why our, our load is even extra heavy even today. That's why we need to dig in and jump into prayer even deeper than we've ever dug into prayer. We need to believe that God's going to answer these prayers as we dig in. So just for a few moments, I, I, want, us to, um, I just want us to step into prayer for these situations, there are some others here this morning. The son has cancer, diagnosed with cancer. We're not going to say they have it. We're just going to say they're diagnosed with it. Um, because in heaven, there's no cancer. And Jesus said to pray on earth as it is in heaven. And as we pray on earth as it is in heaven, there's no cancer there. So there should be no cancer here. And we need to learn that when we pray for people, that we need to, we need to continue to believe in their healing. We know that their healing has already been paid for on Calvary. The healing is already done. There's nothing we can do to change that. It's already done. But we're praying for the manifestation of the healing to happen here on this earth, here in this place. We know it's already happened there. But we want it to happen here. We want to see people free from cancer, free from all these different things that the enemy has brought into this world. So we can turn that up just a little bit.
and we're going to pray. I'm going to turn the lights down just, just, just a little bit. You know, I lost my mom just, just a little while back, but I know she's in heaven. I know she's in heaven, so I'm not, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, I miss her. There's even been times lately I, I went to call her and I picked up the phone to call her and I couldn't. You know, it's emotional. Those are things that, that we have to learn how to get through and deal with and, and uh, just it's part of, part of life. You know, um, our bodies dying and, and living eternally in heaven. That's part of life. You know, and I've said this before, the reason that it's hard for us to understand death or any of these things is because we wasn't designed to understand. We wasn't designed to die. We was not designed that way. We was not created to die. We were created to live and live life abundantly. But because of the enemy and his divisiveness brought death to the world. That's why Jesus had to come to re renew the life and come as a sacrifice for each one of us to have that life through his blood. He loves every one of us. He wants freedom from every one of us. He wants you to be free. I know that some of you here, I'm sure, have chains that you're still weighing you down. You don't have to do that. You don't have to have those chains. You don't have to carry that weight. Jesus said, give it to him. So even right now, as we pray for these two situations, and there's, sure, there's, I'm sure if, by the raising of hands, you guys all have situations you want prayer for. Just raise your hand if you have a situation you need prayer for. Let's lift these up too. Let's just pray. Let's bow our heads. Just, just us and God. Individualize yourself and just get in with God. Pray in the Spirit, however you want to pray. Just pray. Father, we love you this morning. God, we glorify your name. We magnify you, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you're doing, what you've already done. Father, we thank you that you're bringing the people together in this region, God, that can just make this city great, that can turn things around. Father, we see all the stuff that's going on in the region, in the city. We see the people losing lives, overdosing on drugs, car wrecks, cancers, all these different things. But Father, we ask right now that you would teach us to be a people that could not only host your presence, but house your glory in this region. My friend Riley challenged me to do that. Challenged us as a church to do that. To house the glory of God. So, Father, we thank you for these situations. God, that you're bringing healing, you're bringing peace, you're bringing understanding. Father, we thank you for Fanny. We thank you for her womb right now. God, we're contending for life in that womb. Not another baby be stolen from this world. Father, we thank you for Brian, for the life that he still has. So many people to reach. He's already made a difference in this community where, where teens that, that, that I, I believe were kicked out of the church are now able to come back because of his heart, because his love for them. One, one of them come up to him and said, you're not going to leave me too, are you? His whole community gathered outside of his home. His whole church community and the other part of the community gathered outside of his home and they prayed they prayed over his house that God would bring healing. And Father, we're just asking you to do what you do. Bring healing. Father, we're asking you to go forth and manifest that healing that we can all see and glorify you in it. Every situation here that we can glorify you in the healing. Magnify you. Lift you up, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Praise your name. Father, you know each one here. I ask the Holy Spirit that you go in and out. In and out of each aisle. Father, that you would manifest your healing, your loving attributes. Father, everything that heaven has, that you would just bring it on us today. Father, I thank you that you're stepping us from glory to glory each week. Father, I thank you that it's not even about a number, Lord, but it's about a usable people. As Todd said, creating a usable people that can go outside these four walls and minister to a lost and dying world. This is where we grab our strength. In this place, we grab our strength together in unity. And we bind together with unity with cords that cannot be broken. So we can go out in this lost and dying world and reach the lost souls. Guys, I want you to know it's not about you. If you've got a ticket to heaven, for say, if you've asked Jesus to come in your heart and live in your life, it's no longer about you. It's what mission that he has for you to do in this world. There's so many people that are waiting on you and waiting on your testimony and waiting on you to come to them and share with them the love of Jesus Christ that they might come to know Jesus. But this is what's happening. People are watching our lives and they're seeing how we live this thing that we say that we have. They're watching how we live and they're saying, if this is the way you're living and this is all that, that Christianity is, then I really don't want no part of it because I've said that before. I've watched people and seen how they live and I'm like, well, if this is all there is to it, then I'll just stay where I'm at. We've got to live greater, higher, more glorified than ever before. That people can see Jesus in us because he lives in us. And they can see him shine through us. Moms, dads, you want to see your kids change. Change first. Change how you act around them. Change how you talk around them. Change how you are around them. Kids, if your parents are not saved and you want to see them change, change how you are around them. Clean your room without being told. Eat what's on your plate. And they're going to say, who are you? And when you say, when you say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and they're going to say, I want some of that. I want some of that. My grandson that was here the other day, Ledger, <laughs> he was at home, and his dad said, Trump is the greatest president that we've ever had. And my grandson said, no, he's not. And my son, he laughed and he said, well, who is? And he said, Jesus. He said, Jesus is the greatest president. Now I'm telling you, since, since that day that he was here, my grandson's attitude has changed even toward me and his yaya. It's, it's different, it's different now. I mean, there's something, something about him that's different. He grabbed a hold of something. And he said to his mom, he said, Yaya and Poppy sing Jesus to me at night. And it makes me sleep better. I mean, that's good. Coming from my grandson, I mean, that's, that's I love it. So, thank you, Ledger, if you're watching. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Anybody else have anything before I get started? <laughs> I'm going to whoop you guys up in this message. I'm going to whoop. No, I'm not going to really. We're going to have fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Bob, come here. I for, I'm sorry, Bob. I forgot. I got lost. I got lost in 
and his love. Bob has a uh, two-minute session. Your time's already started. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, today, uh, this, this month, everybody. Hi, everybody, by the way. Love you. And, and uh, uh, I was told that uh, this is uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. So um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> so um, it is really, yeah. This, my pastor and my pastor's, my other pastor, where's she at? Okay, she's with the, she's with the darlings. Um, this, we got an unusual situation, not unusual, a, 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 a biblical situation because we've got a husband and wife pastor, and that's, that's the way it, it ought to be as far as I'm concerned. Amen. But the um, Lord put it on my heart to uh, read out of Hebrews 13. It says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have in entertained angels without realizing it. Remember those in prison, and if you were there yourself, uh, as if you were there yourself. Remember also those being men mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful <clears throat> to one another in marriage. God uh, will surely judge those who are immoral and those who are commit adultery. Then it goes on in verse 7. Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. We come to church as babes or people who are uh, not familiar with the word and we depend on the pastor to give us a good word. But we need to check it out with the word also. But uh, we, you have been called to love your neighbor as yourself and, and to forgive your enemies. That's a command from God. And, but uh, we, are, we are told to pray for our pastor and pastors, uh, and, and that's a command. But they've got a greater responsibility than what you and I have of forgiving our neighbor or forgiving our, our enemy and loving our neighbor. So uh, continue to remember that our pastor has a greater responsibility given from God. And, and I, I look at it as if uh, uh, Jesus is the general of the army and they are the platoon uh, leaders and we are the platoon of this company, of this battalion, or, or this company, and and we uh, are given different skills and strengths to add, to, so that so the platoon sergeants can grab onto us and say, "Hey, brother, sister, I need you if we're over here, and would you do this or pray here?" Because we have different strengths that God has given us, because we have a, we are the body of Christ. I used up more than two minutes, but praise the Lord. Uh, we love our pastor. Give him praise and glory. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bob does give good golf lessons, though. You guys need golf lessons. He beats me up on the green. All right, if you have your Bibles, we'll get through this. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 14. Let me use my phone today. Matthew 14, verse 22 through 33. So we're going to read the first time. I'll give you a second to look. Matthew. It's New Testament. Matthew 14, starting at 22. New Testament, New Covenant. This was after the feeding of the 5,000. 
It says immediately he went, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side. The why he sent the crowd away. And after he had sent the crowd away, he went up to the mountain to pray by himself. Guys, there's times that we need to really dig in and get by ourselves and pray. There's times that we need to get in the closet, the prayer closet, whatever that may be in your house, and dig in and pray, whether it's on your face, on your knees, standing up, walking around. Turn the music off that has words. Ambient music would be good. But turn music off that has words and just focus on prayer. See, I see the brokenness in this region. And it's, and it's because of the lack of, of belief and the lack of prayer. Each one of us are responsible to pray. Not only for ourselves, but for others in our family, in our lives. Each one of us are responsible to pray. And Jesus often did this when alone to pray. He separated himself from everyone he was around and went and prayed. after he was there alone verse 24 but the boat was already a long distance from the land battered by the waves for the wind was contrary guys I know that you've you've been battered and you've been beaten up in life I know that you're going through things and you've been through things I mean that's just part of part of life that we have to deal with the things in life we're not from this world, but we are enduring some of the things that are in this world. And sometimes the ship is going to be bad. Sometimes there's going to be storms that we're going to have to go through. That's why prayer is so important. That's why being on our knees in prayer or standing up or on your face or however you do it, that's why prayer is so important because of the battles, because of the things that we go through. We have to be strong. We have to be strong. Fasting is so good to fast and pray and pray in the spirit. See, we talk about that. You know, we talk about the Old Testament, God, the New Testament, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. Salvation comes from Jesus entering our heart, living in our lives. But our power comes from the Holy Spirit. Who Jesus sent when he left. The comforter. Which comforts our ever inner thought. Inner being. And when we pray in the spirit that way. To father in heaven. It changes things. I mean if you don't have a prayer language. I'm not saying you're going. Not going to make it to heaven. I'm just saying you're going to lack power. You're going to lack power without it. Without any freeze. Your car is going to break down. You have to have that to run. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have, you have to have that. And we have to have Holy Spirit. I believe that we have to have Holy Spirit to have the power we need to sustain in this world. And it's get, the world's getting... I don't want to say, I don't want to emphasize that the world's getting worse and worse because I want to focus on the goodness that God is doing in the world. But... God is doing such great things in the world. But in the midst of that, we can see the bad turmoil and the things that are happening, the things that are going on in the world today. And in the fourth watch of the night, let me, I'm too far. Yeah. And in the fourth watch, fourth watch of the night, verse 25, he came to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, They were terrified and said, Is it a ghost? Or it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear.
How many times do we cry out in fear of what's going on? I want to bring something to you. Perfect love casts out fear. The disciples did not have Jesus in their heart, even though they had them with him. He was with them. He walked with them. He talked with them. But yet they wasn't in his heart. So this was a different scenario than what we have right now, that what we have as people. Because we can have Jesus in our heart, living in our heart, casting out the fear through the love of Christ. But immediately Jesus spoke when they were fearful and said, and said, take courage in his eye. Do not be afraid. And he's saying that to you now. Don't be afraid. Take courage. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, this is Peter, the one that recognizes Jesus everywhere in every situation in the Bible. Peter is the first one to recognize him, see him, know that it was Jesus. But he said, if it is you, they command me to come and walk on the water. So what did, G what did Peter do? He walked on the water. See, we look at the Bible and we think, well, Jesus could do the miraculous things. Because he was God and man. But there's nothing that Jesus did that we can't do. Peter proves it right here. Peter, the man, Peter, walked on water. He walked on water wasn't Jesus, it was Peter that walked on water because of Jesus, because of his faith, and he was looking in the eyes of Jesus. That's why it's so important for us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Because what happened? Later on in the verse, what happened? He got his eyes off Jesus. He looked around, he saw the storm all around him, the storm that was raging around him. When Jesus said, don't fear, he saw that storm and he started sinking. And immediately Jesus reached his hand out and grabbed him and pulled him up. And he said, ye have little faith. We've seen miracles. We've seen God move in mighty ways. We really have. I mean, I've seen stage four cancer completely abolished and healed. I've seen it without chemo. I've seen it happen. We've watched legs grow out. We've watched people's pain just disappear. We've watched people's lives just be changed miraculously overnight. We've seen all this stuff happen. But Jesus said to them, ye of little faith. I mean, they just fed 5,000 people with, with, with two fish and some bread and they had 12 baskets of bread left they had 12 baskets left over I mean I would probably say that too you have little faith I mean we just fed 5,000 people I mean what do you mean you know um, but I can't calm a storm and immediately Jesus got in the boat and the, the, the storm was calmed as soon as he got in the boat and I thought about the waves in Florida and waves just come in, they come bashing in the shore. And, and, and I know why they wanted to keep us off, out of the water. I mean, they literally would just suck the sand right back in. And there's two people that died while we were down there. So I understand all that. There are going to be storms. There are going to be waves. We do need to be careful. We do need to be cautious. But because Jesus lives in us, there's no reason to fear anymore. There's really no reason to fear. And if you are fearing... You need to check your walk with Jesus. You need to check your, your, your level, where he's at, how much he is, you know, how, how much he's in your life. In Mark 5, Mark 6, 48, this is hard for me to read. Mark 6, 48, seeing them straining at the oar, for the wind was, and this was Jesus back on the shore. The wind was against them. Life is going to come against you. Be sure of that. But Jesus is our front guard and our rear guard. If we keep our eyes on him and watch what he's doing, watch what he's doing in, in and around others and through us. 
Fourth watch in light, he came to them walking on the sea. And I want to point this out. It says, and he intended to pass them by. Jesus intended to pass these guys by. But because they called on his name, because they called out Jesus, he come in and he calmed their storm. He caused them to walk on water because they called his name. He really was going to pass them by. But because they called on his name. How many times are we calling on Jesus' name when we're sick? Or are we saying, first, well, let's go to the doctor. First, let's do this. Why are we not saying, let's pray first? Let's ask Jesus to intervene and do what he does. Why are we not saying those things? Why are we relying on the things of the world? When it's stuff that God can do. In our broken relationships, why are we relying on counselors even when we can go to Jesus, the ultimate counselor? We can already have our lives mended through him. And that way when an argument does come up in your life, it can be over as quick as it starts. And you can laugh it off. As quick as it happens, it can go away. That's called having a relationship with Jesus. When you have that kind of relationship with him, those things can go away. I'm sure you guys get in a few spats every now and then. But the more you have Jesus in your life, the more you have that private time individually in prayer and even together in prayer. Watch how all that stuff will melt away. It won't even, it'll be irrelevant. The little things that trigger a fight between a couple are so laughable sometimes. And you look back at it and you go, what in the world did we just fight about? I, I've said to Shelly, can we just like erase that whole conversation? <laughs> we just like erase it like it never happened. And we do. We laugh. We said, we were literally, in, you know, and even though we're, you know, we're pastors, but it doesn't mean that we are not above, you know, I don't, I don't fight like that. But, you know, we, we disagree sometimes. And, but we will, most of the time when we disagree, we'll look at each other and we'll stop. For a moment, and then we'll just start laughing. And then it's gone. It, I mean, it really doesn't, it, the things that then we talk, what do we even, what was it even about? Why did we even, you know, um, you know, like Bob said, you know, we, we do have a heavy load. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes, you know. It's not just, this is the easiest part. This, is, this part probably freaks me out the most, but this is the easiest part, really, compared to what we do behind the scenes, compared to ministry behind the scenes. I'm every day, I want you guys to know I'm every day out there. I'm every day constantly talking to people, praying with people, ministering to people. And we're going to, I challenged, in the last service, I challenged us to, uh, we're going to go and we're going to have a day where we all get together. I mean, like all of us get together and we're going to go to the gas station right down the road here, whichever one that is, the first one down past the school. And we're going to all go there and we're going to just minister. We're just going to, we're just going to minister to people. That place is loaded day and night. I mean, it's day and night. I mean, the further it gets into the night, the more backpacks that come on, the more deals that are being made, the more people that are just wigged out of their mind. That's not who they are. It's not what God called them to do or even who he called them to be. They're just messed up. They're confused. They don't understand. They've had a bad life. They've had a rough situation. And that's what got them there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to sit there and pray. I told the mayor, I said, what, what they should do with law enforcement. If you got a drug house, when your cops take their break, have them go sit in front of the drug house. Just go park your car right there. Get out and sit and have your coffee or whatever or talk to your friends. I mean, don't sit down here in this parking lot. Go sit in front of a drug house. That's, you're going to be more effective that way. Yeah, they might move from place to place, but you're still going to move them from place to place, and it's going to slow them down. It just works. It's going to work. If we go down here to this gas station... I don't think people are going to move around. I think they're going to get transformed. I think they're going to get saved. I think they're going to get saved. I believe it. I believe that's going to happen. So are you calling on the name of Jesus? And I got more, but I'm going to stop. In just a second. Are you calling on the name of Jesus? Are you asking him for your every need? Give him first dibs in your every need. My prayer team's going to come up. 
about six of us, however many we have. You guys probably don't know this, but I, I talk to Jesus while I'm up here. You might know it. I mean, I literally have conversations with him while I'm up here talking to you. Oh, wow. It's good stuff. He's so good. I, I mean, I love my relationship with Jesus. Do you guys love your relationship? I mean, if you don't love it, dig into it deeper and you will learn to love it because it's amazing. I love, this is the one thing I love. I love being disciplined by Father. Because he does it in love in such a way that makes me like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll do better. And I want to just do better. I mean, I give him. And what he's doing to us, we talked about this last night, um, what he's doing to each one of us, you know, our leadership and just in you guys, he's literally tweaking us. He's taking all the little things that we're noticing in our lives that are not right. I mean, we're, we're still striving to get where everybody's going and be to the fullness. And so we still have little things in our life that we're like, man, that's not right. Man, that attitude was not good. Or man, I, I spoke wrong there or I received that wrong. You know, it's in, in the giving and receiving. Sometimes we can have something said to us and we receive it totally wrong because we receive it out of a wounded heart. And when you receive something out of a wounded heart, the person saying it might have said it out of love, but you received it out of a wound and Therefore, you go, okay, now I'm wounded. Now I know I'm wounded. I need to get that fixed. That's where Tammy comes in. <laughs> Access Ministries. Yeah. So there's cards back there for her. If you have a deep into inner healing that you need done, um, Tammy's trained in this. She's well trained. And we're going to have other people trained up in this. And it is amazing. It's, it's called Sozo. It's amazing. It's inner healing. And it has transformed my life. Transformed Darlene's life. Shelly's life. Rick and May's life. It's transformed us, you know. I had hurts as a little boy, four-year-old boy, I didn't even know I had. At four years old. I mean, I was hung out of story, two-story window when I was two years old from, from a nail. Hung out of, on a nail by my shirt. And during one of my sozos, I said, Jesus, where were you? I mean, I was, I was upset. I was like, where were you? You know, if you're supposed to protect me and I was a child, where were you? And so he showed me a picture of him on his hands and knees, arched up like a cat, and I was standing on his back. He said, I had you. Every scenario in my life that I've had a grudge against God for, he's showed me where he was in it. See, we can't change what people do to us. But Jesus is going to be with us when we go through some things. But also in hearing the voice of God, you can stay out of some of the situations that we get into. Just by hearing him say, turn right, turn left, stop here, go now. Buy this, don't buy this. In all that, our lives can be changed. Let's stand. If you can, if you're able. You just close your eyes for a moment. Yes. I want to challenge you today. Don't be fearful of anyone around you. I promise you, these people at this place, if you come to the altar, they're going to be rejoicing. They're not going to be thinking, what did they do? What are they doing wrong? No, they're going to be rejoicing with you. That there's freedom, that there's help, and that there's strength to gain. At the altar, when you come, you don't even have to share your whole testimony to anyone down here. You don't even have to share your sin with them. You just tell them to pray for you. And they'll pray. I mean it. It's going to be powerful. So I'm just challenging you today. If you have anything, one thing, just one slightest little thing that you need freedom from, that you need help with, come down. I mean it. It's not the time to wait. 
This is not the time to wait. This is the time to come forth. Be bold. Step out into the water. Know that he has you. Know that he has you. Come and pray. Take the ambient music up just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's good. Come and pray. We've got three people open. We've got two people open. Luke, will you come down here to sin? Come on, guys. Don't tell me your life is all together. Don't tell me that. Because if you say that right now, even if you say it in your heart, you're lying. I'm just going to tell you straight out. Don't tell me that your life is where it needs to be. Look at your life. Review it. Come on. There's got to be some change. Got to be some change. Leslie, will you come down? Kim, will you come down here? Ricky, April, if you want. You guys can team up. Be right here. You guys can just team up right here. Come on, guys. I mean it. Come down. Listen, I was living my life. I thought to the fullest to everything that God had for me and realized I wasn't. It's been five years and I just now realized who I was. Just now realized what God has called me to do. Just now realized the man that he's called me to be. And that's after my whole, since I was 26 years old living for him, thinking I was doing everything right. Realized I wasn't. Realized there were so many things in my heart that needed healing. So many things in my past life that needed healing. And Jesus has healed me. He's still showing me things though. He's still showing me things. And I'm learning from everything he's showing me. I'm rebuking, I'm praying against everything that is not of heaven. I don't want nothing that is not of heaven in me. No attitude, no mindset, no stinking thinking, no gossip. I don't want none of that stuff in me. Fornication. Addictions to pornography and all these other drugs and all these other things. I don't want none of that in my life. Because I've experienced the power of Jesus Christ. I've experienced what it means to have the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I've experienced that. I've been loved so much that I'll never know what it's like not to be loved again. Pure love, true love. Come on, guys. Some of you are just waiting to come up. You're, 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 you're playing that thing in your head. And the enemy's going, you don't need it. Holy Spirit's saying you do need it. Enemies going, you don't need it. Holy Spirit saying, you do need it. Let's go with it. You do need it. It's not going to hurt you. Come on, guys. Be honest with yourselves. Jeremy, you good? Let's pray. Both of them together. Let's pray. It's going to change. It's going to change things. I promise you. It's going to change your life change if you want it better. It's going to do it.
Still have people up here, guys. You're going to be able to have lunch here in a little bit. You will. You'll make it. Anybody else need to pray? I'm going to start calling things out. See, you guys don't know this. The Lord can show me all kind of stuff, and I see all kind of stuff. And I, I hope that people would come up, that they could just give it to God. But because they're not, I can call it out. My two young men on the back row. Some stuff in your guys' life that needs broken off. Some wounds that you guys have, some things that you've been through. Trauma. I want you guys to come up here. We're going to break that trauma off. It's just going to make you more powerful. We'll let these three right here. Or these, these, you guys, all three or two of you. So they have trauma in their life. I don't know what it is. Maybe they can explain or you can explain, I don't know, is there, there's just some stuff they've been through. The enemy keeps lying to them about, about their identity, about who they are, who he says they are. I'm going to break that off right now in Jesus' name. Do you know how much of a powerful asset you are to your family? They look up to you. You're tall in stature. They look up to you. You're a pillar. If that pillar's not strong, the family can't hold together. They can't hold up. You gotta be strong. And there's some things that you question about who you are, about who he is. You've wanted for your years about some things. He wants to answer those things for you. Every question you have, he wants to answer today. About your identity. See, you don't see the value in you. But you are valuable. You're worth it. You are worth it. You've always been worth it. You've had situations in your life that have brought you down to your knees. You've had times where you've reached up to grab a hold of rock bottom. 
But man, he loves you so much. He brought you here today for this season for right now. I've been there. I've been through some of those things. I've been through some of those battles, man. I know they hurt. I know it stinks. I know we question God and ask him why. Don't ask him why. Just ask him what he can do in you and how you can live your life to glorify him, to reach your family to the fullest, to where they're serving him to the fullest and not wholehearted, half-heartedly. You know you've seen that. You've seen them in and out, up and down. I've only met you a few times. But there's power. You carry a power. You carry an authoritative position. And they look up to that. You want to come up and pray? Come on. Right there, this guy right here, Rick. Jaren, listen. Man, you can't deceive yourself no more. There's things that, that God wants to deal with you with, and he's tried to deal with you, and you've ignored it, and you've played it off as other things, and you've pushed it off as other people. But man, God wants you to deal with the things that you have in your life right now. He loves you so much. He loves your relationship. But there's some things in it that need to be healed. There's some wounds that are so deep that need to be healed. And these wounds are not coming from necessarily this relationship. It's coming from the past two relationships. And they've been brought to this one. And we're going to have to get rid of those things. The things that have happened in the past relationships. All the stuff that we carry to this one. It's going to have to be eliminated. Both of you. So I'm just encouraging you to go up to this young couple. Right here in the center. If you guys would go up there and pray with him. I promise it's going to change things. I see you as a mighty warrior. You're the funny one in your family, aren't you? You're the one that makes everybody laugh? Do you? Or are you the quiet one? The loud one? Yeah. Do you know that God has a dream for you? He has plans for you, ambitions for you, and He loves you. You love Him. Have you ever asked Jesus to come in your heart? Yeah, good. Amen. Praise the Lord. What do you want him to do for you today? What's something that you want him to do for you today? Huh? You don't know? Think about it. What's something you want Jesus to do for you today? Have you asked him into your heart? Living your life? Yeah. I can see him in you. I can see him in you. He shines through your eyes. You're going to be one of those people when, when you go up and pray with someone else and you look in their eyes, they're going to see Jesus in your eyes. And that's going to change them. Because he's living in you. Shine for him. Let people see that part of it. Okay? You're going to think of something today. You're going to think of something today. And he's going to answer your prayer. Think about something to pray and he's going to answer it. Do you guys get help? Break it off? Yeah. What's your name? Robin, how are you? I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. So Robin, um, past relationship things you've kind of held on to. Um, in family, it's family stuff. Not so much a man, but it's family stuff. 
things that have happened in your life that you're holding grudges the Lord wants to break that off today so I ask you if you want to come up and, and with May right up here if you go up and pray with her right here break those things off listen 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 Jesus loves you so much he does love you so much and I know you love him I do know that but he wants you to step into a deeper, deeper intimate relationship with him. And he wants all this baggage to be gone. So let's do it. Yeah. I want you guys to know he's so proud. <laughs> He's continuing to mold and shape you guys into the couple that he's called you to be. Just keep it, step into that. Just continue to step into that. Don't back up. Don't, yeah, don't rewind. Don't look back. Don't go back. Stay where you're at and keep stepping up. Glory to glory. Level to level. <laughs> yeah, he's proud of you too. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. Yeah. 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 But I see you. You've been victorious in prayer. You've been a prayer warrior. And God has honored your prayer. He wants you to know. He's honored those quiet nights that you spent alone with him. Those times that you spend in, in his word, he's honoring that. And he wants you to know that he is changing things so you can see those things happen now, today. You're seeing those things now before you go to heaven. You're seeing, you're able to see those things. Most people don't get to see those things. They pray in the quiet and they pass on and they don't get to see the transformation, but you get to see it. It's a work from your prayers. These things that are happening is a work from your prayers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Change your world. Yeah. Never look back again. Never give up again. Amazing. Call you out later, Brandon. <laughs> no, I didn't have nothing for him today. We good? Everybody good? Still got people praying. Next time it'd just be easier if you guys just come up. <laughs> Pray. It would be. I'm a seer, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you what happened to me one time while they're still praying. just got back from a, a meeting a revival the spirit of God came on me so heavy I, I never experienced that in my whole life and we went to the Martinsville fair and everyone in that whole place there was there's all the people that go to the fair and I literally saw captions over everybody's head of who they were who they thought they were in the sin that they were living in and I literally stopped and I told Shelly I said I can't go in there and she said, why? I said, because this is what I'm seeing. And I called out everyone. I literally can see where you're at, what you do, and what you're going through. Through a caption. But I, that day I said, Lord, I cannot handle this. And he took that away from me. And I don't see it like that anymore. But he just shows me, individual people, and he shows me things about them. I'm generally right. 
I don't think I've been wrong today about anything. It's because I do love Jesus. I do love the Holy Spirit. And he lives in me and he shows me what he wants for this city, for this church. We're just a baby start. We're just a beginning of what God wants to do in this city. I'm telling you guys, if you jump a hold of this, what God's doing, this is a center hub of something that he's doing. This city, Martinsville, is a center hub of something he's doing. And it's going to be like a nucleus that's going to explode from here and go out from here. I promise you that's what's going to happen. If you hang tight long enough and see what's going on, that's going to happen. And you're going to be able to say, I was a part. I was a part of that Martinsville revival. We're not calling it a revival yet because it needs to stand the test of time. But you're going to be able to say one day, I was part of that Martinsville revival when they were just a baby church and I was part of their inner team that went out and ministered to this city and changed this city that changed the world. That's what's going to happen. Is everybody done praying? Our city is the city is 55. It's double grace and favor. And that's what God's doing. He's double grace and favor on us in our city. Promise. Jump a hold of this. Watch your finances shoot to the sky. Watch your attitudes shoot to the sky. Watch your marriages change. Watch your lives come together. Watch things happen in your children's lives, in your grandchildren's lives. Things are going to happen because they cannot not happen because of what God's doing. If we dig in in prayer and in intercession with him and get here as often as we can get here and bring as many people as we can to where we pack this place, to where we have to open the doors and they're standing outside or we have to actually just tear this wall down and just buy this place over here and go in there. Either way, it's going to happen. Either way, God's going to move. I don't care if we have to set up outside and we just take the whole parking lot. We just make people move cars down. So let's just pray and leave. Father, we thank you right now for what you've done today. Thank you for the healing, for the transformation, God, for the goodness and newness of lives, Lord, today. Father, thank you that we've seen where we have trouble and you've healed those issues. Father, thank you that you've broken off trauma today. You've you've forgiven unforgiveness today. And people today have forgiven people in their lives that have hurt them and did them wrong. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you in that. We ask that you would go with us this week. God, that we would all reach at least one person this week and bring them back next Sunday. And God, that we would fill this place with people because you're here and you want to have an encounter with each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.